Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Vibha and today we'll be discussing about The Spider and the Fly by Mary Botham Hovitt. We'll be covering the following points in the video today. About the author, poem insights, the poem in detail, analysis of the poem and important questions and their answers from The Spider and the Fly at the end of the video. I would recommend everyone to go through the author's history and background before moving on to the story in the poem because it helps you to gain insights into the mindset of the author and what the author is trying to convey through the poem or the story. Mary Botham Hobbit was born Mary Botham in Gloucestershire and educated at home by a strict Quaker father but rebelled against her Austrian upbringing by marrying William Hobbit in 1870. The newlyweds moved to Hena to run a pharmacy but soon came to Nottingham where they lived for around 20 years while establishing themselves as writers. Including the works she wrote in collaboration with William, Mary Hobbit published around 180 books covering subjects as various as histories of America and magic, children's stories and poems, translations of works by Hans Christian Andersen, original novels and a two-volume autobiography. She knew everybody who was anyone on the literary scene of her day from William and Dorothy Wordsworth to Charles Dickens and counted poet laureate Alfred Tennyson as a neighbour. She also campaigned against the slave trade, managed to travel in Scandinavia, Austria, Italy and Germany, explored spiritualism and in her final years became both a Roman Catholic and a prominent advocate for suffragette causes. The poem The Spider and the Fly first appeared in Howard's collection Sketches of Natural History, which was published in 1834, which is a series of poems written to educate children about the realities of the natural world. It is a cautionary tale, that is, it provides a warning or teaching about the manner in which the innocent and gullible. Now, the gullible are the people who can easily be persuaded and are not defensive enough. How the innocent and gullible can be won over by the wily and shrewd predators who abound in society. The poem reads like a fantasy or fable as the spider and the fly both act and behave like human beings. Ultimately, they act as metaphors, that is, representations for certain types of people who exist in society. Now, moving on to the poem in detail. The spider is considered as a man by many critics, as a representation of men in society, and the fly as female. Will you walk into my parlour? said the spider to the fly. So at the first line itself, the spider tries to lure the fly. Now you can have a question in the exam as well, the different ways in which the spider is trying to lure the fly and the fly's reaction to it. This is the prettiest little parlour that ever you did spy. No way into my parlour is up a winding stair and I have many pretty things to show when you are there. Oh no no, said the little fly, to ask me is in vain, for who goes up your winding stair can never come down again. So the fly does grieve and has a temptation to accept all that the spider is saying and is offering because she does not have it. But initially, she does maintain a defensive posture. She says a clear no to the spider. Because she has heard what the spider does to the victims. Now, the next tactic by the spider is that he says that fly, whatever I am doing is for you only. You might be very tired. So, Look around, I have a little bed with such fine and thin sheets and cottons drawn all around. You won't have any disturbance. You can rest because you are tired. I'm sure you must be weary, dear, with soaring up so high. Will you rest upon my little bed? said the spider to the fly. There are pretty curtains drawn around. The sheets are fine and thin. And if you like to rest a while, I'll snugly tuck you in. Oh, no, no, said the little fly. 
For I've often heard it said, They never, never wake again, Who sleep upon your bed. She's still trying to defend herself, Protect herself from the spider. Now this can be compared to, I'll give you a very realistic example. When you go to a parlor, Say just for a haircut, They'll say, Oh, your skin is so dry, Get a facial. Oh, your nails are not good. Get something done on your nails. Get something else done on your hair. Now you think there is actually a problem with your skin, your hair, your nails. So you get lured easily and say, okay, I'm ready for the treatment. So these are the ways in which the predators lure people. And the cunning spider to the fly. If you are the word cunning is used. Dear friend, what can I do to prove the warm affection I've always felt for you? I have within my pantry good store of all that's nice. I'm sure you're very welcome. Will you please to take a slice? Oh no, no, said the little fly. Kind sir, that cannot be. I've heard what's in your pantry and I do not wish to see. Now you see the transition. Cunning spider. And the fly, though she still says that I don't want these things, she uses the word kind sir. After all this, now that the spider is seeing that the fly is still not coming into his parlor, he uses vanity. He uses flattery. To get her in. Sweet creature, said the spider. You're witty and you're wise. How handsome are your gauzy wings. How brilliant are your eyes. I have a little looking glass upon my polished shelf. If you'll step in one moment, dear, you shall behold yourself. I thank you, gentle sir, she said. For what you are pleased to say. And bidding you good morning now. I'll call another day. Now gauzy means thin and transparent. The spider says, see you have such colourful and lovely wings. You are so witty. You are so wise. Why don't you come? See I have a looking glass. Behold your beautiful self. Just one moment. And it's all over. The fly. Now starts to fall in because she says, gentle sir, she thanks the spider for his pleasing words and she likes what she is hearing. She is not saying now, oh no, no, don't tell me, I have heard whatever has happened. She acknowledges. She tells, I'll come back again. There is a huge change in the fly. The spider now realizes that he is getting successful. The spider turned him round about and went into his den. For oh, well he knew the silly fly would soon be back again. So he wove a subtle web in a little corner sly and set his table ready to dine upon the fly. Then he came out to his door again and merrily did sing. Come hither, hither, pretty fly, with the pearl and silver wing. Your robes are green and purple. There's a crest upon your head. Your eyes are like the diamond bride, but mine are dull as lead. The trap is laid because he knew the fly would be back again to hear her praise. Now from the parlour, the word den is used. Spider knows he has done enough to lure the fly. So the fly is now thinking that, oh, she's soaring high. Oh, I'm above all. I have such beautiful wings. A crest on my head. My robes are beautiful. Alas, alas, how very soon this silly little fly Hearing his wily, flattering words, came slowly flitting by. With buzzing wings, she hung aloft. 
and near and near it drew, thinking only of her brilliant eyes and green and purple hue, thinking only of her crested head. Poor foolish thing! At last up jumped the cunning spider and furiously held her fast. He dragged her up his winding stair into his dismal den within his little parlour, but she never came out again. Flitting means flying, or to move quickly and lightly. Now, dismal den, it is an alliteration, repetition of the starting letters, B, D. Dismal den means a very sad, sad, dark den. Now, spider is a representation of the false, pretentious people existing in society. And now, dear little children, who may the story read? To idle, silly, flattering words, I pray you never give heed. Unto an evil counsellor, close heart and ear and eye, and take a lesson from the tale of the spider and the fly. Heed means to give attention. Now the author says that I have been trying to warn you. This story would act as a caution to all the young children. So that was the poem in detail. Now it is the time for important question. So why is the poem The Spider and the Fly called a cautionary tale? So the poem The Spider and the Fly by Mary Botham Hobbit was written to educate children about the realities of the natural world. It is a cautionary tale about the manner in which the innocent and gullible can be won over by the wily and shrewd predators who abound in society. It starts with the spider trying to lure the fly by asking her to come into his little parlour which has unseen pretty things, a little bed with fine sheets and pretty curtains around, a pantry with loads of delicacies. The fly tries to defend herself and denies all the sweet gestures. But when the spider flatters her, she comes back, thinking about her gauzy wings, purple and green robe and eyes like pearl. The poem reads like a fantasy or fable as the spider and the fly both act and behave like human beings. So now I'll give you a tip. On your, in your exams, say IST exams, when you get a question, make sure that you have a lot of quotes in it. So you start the questions. If you have a 20 mark question, then you start it with lots of quotes. Underline the quotes. Quote them. The more you quote, the better it looks. But it does not mean you write the entire story of the poem. You quote. Then you give examples and at the end of it, you have a comparison with another similar story or a poem. Moving on to the next question. Who do you think is responsible for the fly's death? Now, if we look at the poem literally, then it is very evident that the spider is responsible for the fly's death. He lures the fly. Then she acts as a victim and he dies upon the fly. But if you read the poem deeply, one may realize that the fly is responsible for her own fate. She knew that the spider's den is not the place for her. She knew something is wrong. She knew she should not fall for it. But she fell in for vanity and flattery. She fell in for the spider's words. She threw all the cautions to the wind. She did not pay heed to any of the warnings that came her way. And ultimately, she met with her death. With that, we come to the end of this lesson. I hope you all liked this video. Do mention in the comment section below, what are the improvements do you want in the video? Which topics do you want me to take up next? And I'll make sure I let that happen. If you like this video, then don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. And share this video with your friends. Because it takes a lot of hard work to make such videos. To research on the topics. To create these presentations for all of you. So it would be really nice if you could... Show some support and love to my channel because it helps me to keep getting motivated to create more content for all of you. Thank you for watching. Bye.